We are back with Erie Elementary. The school is alive. Thank you to our publisher, Scholastic, our author, Jack Chabert, and our illustrator, Sam Ricks. All right, we are on chapter seven. We're going to do seven, eight, and nine. Seven is called Believe Me. I, Peter Pan, challenged the friendly pirate noodler to a fight, Antonio yelled. He swung an invisible sword through the air. It was Tuesday morning, and Sam, Antonio, and Lucy were walking to school. They were practicing their Peter Pan lines. But Sam couldn't focus on the lines. He could not stop thinking about what had happened the night before. Antonio laughed. Sam, you have the worst part in the play. You only have a few lines toward the end. And really, who wants to be a friendly pirate anyway? Huh? Sam said. Sam's not even paying attention, Lucy moaned. This play is going to be a disaster. Everything is going to go wrong. Antonio patted his pocket, smiling. Not as long as I have my lucky sandwich. Antonio and Sam and his friends had been, had been friends since kindergarten, and Antonio had always carried a peanut butter and jelly sandwich around in his pocket. So there's his sandwich. It's a weird thing to carry in your pocket. Sometimes he carried the same sandwich around for weeks. Sam thought it was a little bit disgusting, but also a little bit awesome. <laughs> Sam stopped walking. Guys, I really need to tell you something. Sam looked around to make sure no one was nearby. He pulled his friends in close. Remember the quicksand I told you about yesterday? I know you didn't believe me, but after school, more weird stuff happened. I fell asleep while on hall monitor duty. I believe that, Antonio joked. Listen, Sam said, when I woke up, the school was going crazy. I was attacked by the oak tree. Then Mr. Nakobe saved me, but I think he might be a bad guy or something. He's super weird. Antonio frowned. You're losing your mind. Lucy agreed. I'm starting to worry about you, Sam. Sam ran his hand through his hair and said, just wait until we get to school. You'll see. There's a broken window and busted lockers and the fire hose is tied in a big knot. When they got to school, Sam rushed past his friends and up the front stairs. What he saw blew his mind. See if you can guess what's, what, what he's going to see, what he saw when he goes into the school. Do you think it's still all messed up or do you think it looks like nothing ever happened? Everything was back to normal. It was like nothing had happened. The fire hose was wound up and the lockers were closed. No, Sam whispered. This doesn't make any sense. Antonio gently punched Sam in the arm. You should really get some more sleep. Your nightmares sound serious. And that's what he sees when he goes in. Everything looks normal. And there he is in the window. All right, we're on... Oh, not the new chapter yet. Ring! The morning bell rang and everyone began filing into class. The huge window in Miss Grinker's class wasn't broken. Even the oak tree looked normal. This was a regular Tuesday morning, but not for Sam. Sam wanted answers and he thought he knew where to get them. But first, Sam, hurry up, Lucy said, running into class. Sam groaned. He had to check the halls and then get to class too. His answers would have to wait. So there's the bell. And then we're going to chart, start chapter eight, which is Into the Darkness. Let's see who that is. There's Mr. Nakobe. As soon as the bell rang for recess, Sam went looking for Mr. Nakobe. He spotted him outside the janitor's closet. Sam watched Mr. Nakobe open the closet door. Mr. Nakobe looked both ways down the hall, like he was afraid he was being watched. Then very slowly, the old man reached into the dark closet. Mr. Nakobe tugged twice on the light bulb. Brum! There was a low rumbling noise as the rear wall of the closet began to move. A secret door, Sam thought. Mr. Nakobe stepped through. Sam swallowed. Sweat was pouring off his brow. He needed to know the truth about Erie Elementary. This was his chance. Sam darted across the hall and he closed the closet door behind him. Then he leapt through the secret doorway. What do you think? Sam found himself in a large room with punching bags, pieces of old lockers, and school chairs with three legs. The room was dark. It smelled wet. Sam Graves, Mr. Nakobe said, I've been waiting for... Sam cut him off. What happened last night? And how is everything back to normal today? I know I didn't imagine all that stuff. Mr. Nakobe said, you imagined nothing. Place your hand against the wall, Sam, and focus. Sam frowned. You're nuts. Do you want to know the truth or not, Mr. Nakobe said. Sam sighed and placed his palm against the cool brick wall. The room grew quiet. Then he heard it, the soft sound of air blowing, and he felt it, 
The wall was gently swaying. It was the school. The school was breathing. Do you think it's really alive? I don't know. Sam backed away from the wall. Oh, what's happening? He stuttered. Mr. Nakobe walked toward Sam. As his face passed through the shadows, he looked almost inhuman. Eerie Elementary is alive, Mr. Nakobe said. Sam shook his head. That can't be. That's impossible. Mr. Nakobe continued. The school is a living, breathing thing. It is a beast, a monster, and there is only one person who can keep its student students safe. Who? Sam asked softly. Mr. Nakobe stooped down until he was face to face with Sam. You, Sam Graves, the hall monitor. Chapter nine is called Hero with a question mark. Like, is Sam really the hero? In a strange hidden room, this man was telling Sam that the school was alive and that he was supposed to keep everyone safe. He couldn't believe it. I too was a hall monitor, said Mr. Nakobe, Erie Elementary's first hall monitor. And since then, I have been here to fight the school and protect the students. But now I am old and weak and the school knows it. The school knows that now is the time to strike. It is planning something big. Sam collapsed in a chair. There were goosebumps all over his body. But how can the school be alive? I don't understand. The source of the school's power is a mystery, Mr. Nakobe said, but I know this. It is evil. It feeds on students and it has not fed in a long time. It is hungry. Sam's heart was pounding. Mr. Nakobe continued, as hall monitor, you have the ability to sense the school, to see and feel and hear what others cannot. But you must be careful because the school can sense you too. It has attacked you twice already. It knows you are its enemy. Sam gulped. Mr. Nakobe said softly, you must be our hero now, Sam Graves. Do I have it in me, Sam wondered? Do you think he can do it? That was the end of, oh, nope, one more page, sorry. Sam thought about the quicksand and the tree and the lockers. What if that had happened to Lucy or Antonio? The school could have eaten them. And if the school is planning something big, then my friends are in danger. Sam turned to Mr. Nakobe and said, okay, I'll do what I must. Mr. Nakobe smiled, good. So now what, asked Sam. Now you begin your training, said Mr. Nakobe. He yanked on a filthy white sheet, uncovering what looked to be a large metal monster. And then he walked back out through the secret door, leaving Sam all alone. Or so he thought. All right, that was the end of chapter nine. So you're going to go to the next recording for 10, 11, and 12.